question? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, thank you, Jen. So this is Hiral, and today we have a wonderful one of my friend, and uh, like you can say, co-artist with A Log. Uh, we we were together in A Log, a German town art league. So I know her since then, and she's very good in uh, framing, like mat. You know, she's a certified framer. And she has done, I have heard she has done so many demonstrations for the match and cutting and everything. And I wanted to learn this. Honestly, this is I'm a this is a selfish act. <laughs> when I was looking for an artist and I was thinking, yeah, this is wonderful. And I, I asked so many people and then I come to hear about Laurie and I thought, oh, that's wonderful. I know her. And so here she is. And I, I have many questions. I already asked her and I'm sure you have many questions. I use the mat for the G clay prints for my painting prints. And I always buy and look for and spend a lot about uh, on mat. So I want to learn. So let's uh, uh, learn how she does. Right, Laurie? So here it is. Uh, I'm going to step in one brief question it, for anybody who starts having um, questions while Lori's talking, not to have her lose her train of thought immediately. Uh, if you could just put it in the chat and I'll monitor it and um, go from there. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so welcome is, Lori. This is yours, Lori now. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. We'll share a screen. <clears throat> This is just an overview of what I do. This is, let's see, this is the shop I work at. It's in the only shopping center on George Avenue, corner of 108 and 97. And you can substitute matting if they're for frames, if you'd like, because matting is an inter integral to the presentation of an object and they must enhance and not distract from the picture and secure it safely. And as fashions have changed over time, so have approaches to framing art and matting it. This is our counter where we help customers pick out mats and frames. And since we're mostly artists and we show our work, we like, and most galleries and other places request neutral matting. These are all the whites and creams that are available. <laughs> so. This is a little thing I've picked up on the, on the web. Can you see it? Yeah. All? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can see that. Yes. Um, now it's best to avoid snow white matting, which tends to be dazzling and thus distracting. <laughs> if you want to introduce color, you know, consider double matting. Colored mat should, should be beneath the neutral mat. And that's just a rule of thumb. There are some pictures that are dark and you, and you might want to use a dark mat on top and use the white to bring out the highlights. So it's, it's really an individual thing. Um, now for a show, you'd have to read the rules and see what colors you can use. I don't, some shows will allow black and grays. So you have to keep that in mind if, if that's your purpose. For decorative matting, there's really no rules if you're just gonna hang it on your living room wall. We also have uh, fillets uh, or fillets <clears throat> and they're little, uh, pieces of wood that are like molding that fit inside the mat. So you have the frame, which is wood, then the mat, and then a little band of wood around the inside. It can be gold or, or, this, or the same color as the wood of the frame, which is nice. And, and when I was doing this for another group, they wanted to know yeah. prices. And these are could be outdated by now. The, uh, uh, prices are subject to change. Um, Art Association. Um, so this is the mat cutter we use at work. However, 
However, um, my boss doesn't like all this, these bars and um, he has stripped it down to this. <laughs> so um, we have to put the rule on a different way and I'll show you that later. And then another little conservation framing. You wanna use alpha mats or alpha rags or crescent rag mats. Um, they don't have the lignin. If you look at really older pictures from even from the 80s and 90s, you'll see the brown line around it that's causing um, your picture to turn brown as well. And that's because it's not acid free. And you, if, if you notice that and you really like the picture, change it immediately. <laughs> this is our saw. This is what we used to join the wood, the molding with. And this is our mat cutter. Um, this cuts the outsides of the mat to, to the square shape that you want it. Um, it has a rule at the bottom and a rule up, up there. So you can see, see, it's just easier to cut it. You don't have to draw any lines or make any marks. I don't know how interested you are in glass. And I can um, share this with Haral and she can send it to you if, if you'd like. Now to matting. This is a real easy mat cutter to use. It's um, it's kind of foolproof. You, you, you start at one place and you stop at one place and it's very, um, I don't know, easy. It's pretty easy to use. This is, this is the uh, base and you would cut along this line here. You measure the width of your mat here. And I think I was cutting a two and two and a half inch mat. So this edge of the bar is right at two and a half. So that when you put your mat under this bar, it bumps up against the bar and you've got two and a half inches. This is the mat cutting head. And this little line lines up with your pencil line that, that you rule against that bar. And that tells you where to stop and start or start and stop. And what you do is you just put this part on this, this part of the bar and then push down with your thumb here so that, it, so that the blade goes into the mat board. And then after you push down, you push this way and it cuts the mat. <laughs> So when you're cutting a mat, you need to know the frame size. If you have a 16 by 20 frame, then you need to cut it, you know, 20 this way and 16 this way. This is the front of the mat. What you, you turn it over to the back. And I know this is the back because it's got the information on it, but you don't always have that. <laughs> the um What you want to do is slip a um, cutting sheet underneath the bar and then put your piece of mat board underneath the bar so that you're actually cutting on the cutting through this mat to the cutting sheet rather than straight to the to the Logan base. And if you'll notice this, see how this line lines up here? with the pencil line, it's hard to see. I am not a videographer or I would have done a demonstration for you. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a very good photographer either. So you'll have to bear with me. 
But anyway, you'd push this down so that the blade goes into the paper, into the paper mat, and then you'd push it, you know, you'd push it that way until you stop at this line. And then with any luck, you have a mat. And this shows you the bevel of that mat. So it's a pretty good cutter. Then um, you get your second piece of mat board. You put the center back in the mat. If you want to cut a double mat, I'm sorry, let's back up. That was a single mat. And you could stop there and, and use that to frame your picture with. If you want to cut a double mat, what you do is turn, turn it upside down again, fit the uh, center back into the hole, and then um, use some ATG tape or any double-sided tape will work, but this is what we use at the shop. It's called adhesive tra transfer tape, and this is an adhesive transfer gun. <laughs> so you put the tape you don't need a whole lot of tape. You don't need to go overboard. I put a little bit here, a little bit here, a couple pieces on this end, a couple pieces there and there. And then you need a piece in the center so that that um, will stay stuck to the under mat. And then you attach it to the under mat. Let's see, I think I've got, you can see how when you cut the bottom mat, the outside size, you wanna cut it a quarter of an inch smaller than the top mat, so that when you're, when you're putting it up against the bar, you'll get a parallel line. If this were the same size, you run the risk of the, the bottom mat pushing out, out here and making your line go askew, so you wouldn't have a parallel line. And then you put it, put it back in the cutter and rule the lines against here. You move this to the next size you want. So if, if this was two and a half, you'd move this bar to two and three quarters so that you'd see a quarter of an inch of the under mat. And then when it comes out, that's the back of the mat. Here's the front. So you've got the top mat, and then you see a quarter of an inch of the bottom mat. Actually, in this case, it's 5 sixteenths because we're, I was framing um, a pastel for a customer. Uh, you might know her, Debbie Wolf. Um, so when you put the picture, oh, okay, with pastel, it's important to put a, um, a spacer between the mat and the artwork so that if anything should happen to fall from the pastel, it'll go down into a trough rather than between the mat and the glass. So I just um, ATG strips of foam core. You can use another sheet of mat board other strips of map where they might have. It's, it just needs to be a little slot so that, and it, it looks like this, you'll, you'll see the opening there. And if there was any loose pigment here, it would fall between the mat and the picture rather than between the glass and the mat. Hmm. Okay. I left out a lot of pictures. <laughs> I thought I had this all set up. Anyway, do, do you have any questions? And I'll find some. Let's see.
if you want to unshare your screen just for a time being, like uh, when, okay. when finding, or maybe that's fine. I think you found. Let's let's let's. Well, anyway, I can show you this way. Um, this is Debbie's landscape that we that she framed, and uh, then it's going to show you a watercolor. Let's go back. I'm sorry, I'm I'm new to this. You're doing a fine job, Lori. Let's Don't... see. There we go. Um, when you mount your picture to the when you hinge it so that it doesn't fall out of the mat, um, we use a linen tape, and they sell it at Plaza. Um, basically, you'd put you'd, you'd uh, wet the tape on on the sticky side and stick it to the back of the picture, and then you take another piece of tape and put it down on top of that. And that's called a T hinge, and it just keeps. They say it's more stable to tape it to the backing board than it is to the piece of mat board that you've just cut out. I'm not sure why, it's just something that we've done. Um, I've done both, I've, I've attached pictures to the back of the mat and to the board, they, they all seem to be okay. Um, but don't tell the Professional Picture Framing Association that. <laughs> so, I was, I was gonna ask you something, like the white is the form board, right? The white, yes, okay. yes it is. Yeah. Yes. In this case, and then we put the mat on it, and that's an upside down version. But Lori, we have a couple questions. Sure. Um, in terms of the mat cutter, is it hard to push? Uh, not if you keep your blades sharp. If you keep changing your blades, I I, I tend to use a blade for every couple of mats and then switch it around to the other side. And what was the name of the one you? The mat cutter, it, I'm not gonna, I'm not here to sell Logan mat cutters. I don't get any money from them, but they, no, but they, they do seem to be, the, your the, recommendation. They, they do seem to be the most um, straightforward. Um, Is there one? Best, in best way to know that when to stop and start. The, uh, the least expensive is like $97. It's 30 inches long. And um, it basically looks like this. Okay. Compact. Yeah. Better. Mm -hmm. Awesome. What would you recommend? This is another question for a very large paper that's too large to frame. I'm not sure exactly how, how large, large is too large to frame. Idea. I, I not we, sure. frame, we frame things that are four by eight feet. <laughs> so in that case, go to a professional if you have something too large to frame. Uh, the, the mat, we, our mat board comes, we can get white mat board up to 48 by 96, I believe. Um, most, most of the oversized mat that comes in colors only goes up to 40 by 60. 40 inches by 60 inches. Okay. So, um, and we do have an oversized cutter at the shop, which is 60 inches long to handle that. And actually, um, Logan, if you buy a mat cutter like this, it comes with a DVD showing you how to use it, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> bonus yeah um see there was one one other thing i wanted to do and i think it's in my mail here let's see yeah this this is sandy yagel's watercolor she just recently got into the into bws as a signature member juried in um, but here I've used a double mat of the same color 
because she'll want to enter it into shows and and things like that so you want to keep it neutral and um the bottom mat is about three eighths of an inch wide and i like to do that with um mats of the same color because it it doesn't give you that closed in feeling it kind of opens it up some samples of mats that we have we have mats with um, colored bevels, blue, pink, green, black. And these are probably more for decorative purposes. If you wanted to hang something in your living room that you really liked and you wanted to accentuate it with a color. Is it okay to ask in person or should I chat? Or no, go for it. Um, regarding the colored mats, I've heard mixed reviews about them being not really acid free. Uh, any viewpoints, Lori? As a hard, uh, they are acid free, especially the the crescent rags and the alpha rags. Bainbridge makes alpha rag um, and there are other mat companies now. You just want to make sure that that they are conservation quality. I, and, it, I, and it should say it should say uh, right on the back of the corner sample if you're at a frame shop, you know, if it's acid free or not. What I um, meant when colored, colored beveled ones, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think they are. They, um, they have all sorts of buffering techniques now that are much better than they were back in the 80s. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, this is another little, this was a miniature pastel that Debbie Wolf did. And she mounted it. She wanted us to top mount it on black suede and it came out very dramatic. It's very. What did you uh, use to adhere it? Look. To the... Uh, the linen tape. Oh, really? And yeah. That, that will stay. Forever. Yeah. Yeah, it, it will. The, um, and if you're concerned about that, you can actually cut a slit in the suede so that you can put the tape through the suede mat and attach it on the back where it's paper. Interesting. OK. Um, what, and what, what, in this case, you'd use a spacer to keep the glass away from the the pastel. Mm. Got it. And they make little plastic spacers. They're mm. probably about an eighth of an inch deep and three sixteenths wide, and they fit right under the lip of the frame between the mat board and the glass. Yeah, like like a rubber, right? The soft and used yeah. ones, yeah. Uh, and you have to just or, slide or, it. Or or acrylic, mm -hmm. hard plastic. Do you mount on aluminum? Uh, we don't. We have, we do have. Uh, April Rimpo does mounts her watercolors on the aluminum. Okay. Um, but we don't. You, okay. We don't do okay, that. So it can be done. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you use as a cutting sheet? another question uh you mean underneath the mat just I, a just a scrap piece of mat board okay this this is this is mine i did this pastel another way to um keep the pastel dust from going between the mat and the glass is to cut the mat with a reverse bevel so that the angle is going underneath the picture rather like I the, see this is just a straight edge it doesn't have the bevel so what happens is any dust would go into the bevel rather than between the glass and the mat these are decorative mats that I've cut over the years this is actually just one sheet of mat board. Cut one, two, three, four, five times. And then 
each center is put back in to make it look like it's a quadruple mat. Yes, sir. Yeah, very cool look. And uh, Haral was asking for everybody else who wasn't in the chat earlier, what you do with the waste product if of the inside here, here would be a solution. This, yeah. is a, this is a hand cut mat. The, the little squares are cut with the mat cutter, but these are all hand cut in a V groove. Do you need a special mat cutter, cutter to do the squares? Um, no, just the same one. It just, you have to be real small. <laughs> you have to, have to be real careful about not going out of it. But it was a uh, clamped and it had all these little squares and curvy lines and I thought I'd have some fun. Came out really nicely. Mm, this is cool. This is, this is cool. another decorative mat with this has a fillet. This this gold piece here is actually a wooden, a piece of wood cut to fit underneath the mat. And it just gives you because you are a framer, you could do it, but I think at home. It's no, no, I don't think that. they do make um, little guillotines that will will cut the fillet in a bevel. Um, mm -hmm. and you could, I think, even Plaza might have a, a pair of pliers that she could do it with. Not not pliers, but it's a handheld mechanism that will cut in a a forty five degree angle. Okay. So you could do it. If you were, if you really wanted to. <laughs> yeah. This uh, is another one. This, this, um, this is cut. So this is cut on this side of the blue line and that side of the blue line. So it's cut one, two, three times wow. to allow that blue to show through twice. So you got the blue here and then the blue coming through there. And it just kind of brings you into the picture. So the blue is the one mat, and then uh, the another brown is the smaller, so we can see both the side, right? Yeah, yeah. The blue is um, the bottom mat, hmm. and then it's really in. Yeah. Does it not go all the way around the picture, or is that just the lighting? Yeah, it goes all the way around the picture. Oh, okay. Um, we do have another question about what is the recommended distance between the art and the frame? Are all the sides equal or more space at the top of the mat? That has, um, that tradition started back in Paris when they had the, the shows where the pictures were hung one on top of each other from the ceiling to the floor. Mm -hmm. And the ones that's on the top, if you cut the mat the same size all the way around, when you looked up at it, the, the bottom part of the mat would look smaller than the top and the sides. Mm -hmm. So they started cutting the bottom wider so that it would look even all the way around as you looked up at it. And that's, that's how that started. The other reason that started was because artists wanted to have as much space between around their work as they could. So they'd cut wide mats and they'd make those wide frames so that their art would look special because they, they hung them like two inches apart. Interesting. So that, that's the history of it. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's interesting, you know. <laughs> Nowadays it's personal choice. If you like a wider bottom, we'll certainly cut a wider bottom. But most of our mats are equal all the way around because most of the time you're looking at them at eye level. And is the fillet glued to the mat? This is another. Uh, yeah, double-sided tape. Man, that's some really good stuff, the double-sided tape. Yes, it is. It is. Well, that's probably all I have. <laughs> and then there's the 
the that's address right. to everybody who's asking. I, I had sent everybody the Facebook page. Do you have a web page? No, we don't. Uh, George is old fashioned and we, we do not, we're not on the web yet, <laughs> except via Facebook. Well, that works too. Um, another question rolling in is two inches or three inches the standard for a mat? Um, actually, that varies according to the size of the picture. With smaller pictures, you might want to go with a narrower mat. With larger pictures, you probably want to go with a three inches or even four. It just after you do it for a while and you, sh you, you frame your work for a while, you get to know what looks better. Okay. Start with a three inch for larger stuff and I think you'll be happy. Good to know. Um, um, 16 by 20, you, you know, you can go as narrow as two and a half to, and up to three. Wow. 11 by 14, you know, two to two and a half. Is there a brand, well, just in terms of materials, is there a brand of mat you prefer and a brand of double-sided tape? No, um, I think they, they sell the ATG tape both to be used in a gun and to use it as a hand-rolled application so that you can put it down. And I believe Plaza would sell that. And I think you can get it from most of the online stores. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just ATG tape, adhesive transfer tape. Got it. And I'm assuming that the adhesive transfer tape doesn't have any acid in it? Right. Um, okay. And then uh, more, more questions rolling in. Can you explain exactly how to do the T-mount versus the hinge mount? Well, um, the T-mount is a hinge. You can hinge your art to the back of the mat with one piece of tape because it would be on the back of the tape and it would be on the back of the mat. I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, hopefully, Rob, if you're listening, could you unmute yourself and maybe ask directly. Yeah, I'm here. What's the difference? You talked about one way to do it and another way to do it. I don't understand. Oh, well, the T-hinge usually is used when you attach the picture to the, to the backing board rather than to the mat. And that is a hinge. Oh, okay. I got it. I can be unclear sometimes. Okay, next question. Um, do you have any safety tips to avoid the worst paper cut ever uh, with the hand roll? Uh, oh, this person is actually offering a safety tip. Sorry, I misread it. Um, because the bevels can be pretty darn sharp. I can imagine. Um, and, and Ellen says the safety message is to avoid the worst paper cut ever with a hand roll type, use a burnisher of some sort of sort to firm the ATG tape in place. Ellen, do you want to elaborate the a little? ATG I don't know. is double-sided, so. Yeah, the ATG tape has that paper backing on the hand roll type. Yeah. And when you place it in place, you then need to kind of <clears throat> press it down. Sorry, I have something in my throat just now. But do not use your fingers to do that. Oh, I do. Oh, don't ever. Don't do it anymore. <laughs> I, 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 I put it down and then I, I, when I peel it up, I use my thumb to kind of keep it in place as I pull it across. It's, you don't have to really press that stuff down much until after until you put the other thing on top of it that's when you want to press hard well for those who are not certified professional picture framers use a burnisher because otherwise you'll have to get a big box of band-aids <laughs> well you don't really have to burnish it ellen it you don't have to push it down that hard you just have to make sure it doesn't pull up <laughs> as you're taking the top piece of the tape off 
A couple more questions coming in. Um, in terms of matting behind, uh, matting specifically watercolor, does it have to be, be behind a mat? Watercolor? Um, these days, people are framing everything without mats. Um, in fact, some, like like I was talking about, you, you were asking about uh, mounting stuff on a Lumalite. The, um, the artist, April Rimpo, that is one of our customers and she does all of her, most of her watercolors and mounts them on the aluminum. And then you can frame them just like that. You don't even need glass. Um, you can frame paper with the spacers that I was talking about. You can, so that there's space between the glass and the watercolor. You, you don't really wanna put glass right on top of the watercolor. So basically, yeah, you can you can do just about anything without a out a mat, but with watercolor, just, put, just don't put the glass against the watercolor. Yeah, but That's the only no no. The thing about watercolor is that it ripples, and the mat does tend to help minimize that. But if it's really rippled, you'll you you should probably treat dampen the back of it and set it under weights to let it dry so that it has less ripples some people really don't like ripples That's some amazing. people understand that it's part of the material it's what the material does paper when it gets wet it wrinkles and it ripples and that's part of its life okay that could it's very yeah. interesting and then if so if you actually mounted the watercolor on like april does on aluminum it wouldn't ripple no it doesn't okay it's it's adhered okay uh, another question about the linen tape do you have a brand or what is exactly called because again yeah it's, it's, it's um it's just it's just called a Linen hinging linen, tape, right? Yeah, linen hinging tape. Yeah, it, um, I think it's called gummed because it you, you have to activate it with with moisture with water. Okay, and and you prefer that over the self adhesive? Yeah, it's stronger. Okay, it, it oh, that's like good it. to know. Because the um, some of the watercolor paper is pretty pretty thick, and you need something that will hold it. Um, I'm going to try and find the link so everybody can see that. Um, excellent. Anybody else have questions? You can pipe in at this point. Just sent this is the linen hinging tape. I guess I'll stop sharing. Sorry, I just, just wasn't sure how you use the linen tape. I mean, how do you, uh, are you attaching it to the front or the back or how, what are you doing with, with, with it? With the T hinge, with the T hinge, you what you want to do is um, take your mat, center the picture under the mat, and make sure the mat the mat is square with the backing board, so that you know that the picture's in the right place. Then you can put a clean um, weight on top of the picture so it doesn't move. Then um, you take the tape and you put the sticky side on the back so that the sticky side is up. And then with the second piece of tape, you put it sticky side down on top of the tape that's on the back of it. I can go back to sharing, show you that. And I'd appreciate that. I, I'm just like not getting it somehow. Sure. Let's see where was that? So it doesn't make like a lump. What a lump? No. Yeah. This is the piece with the sticky side up.
on the top. Okay, and then where's the other piece? Then over here, I've put the second piece sticky side down on top of this. Oh, okay. See, you want to cut this a little bit smaller than the top so that it covers it and sticks to the backing board on the outside edge. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else have any questions for Lori? Lori, I have a question in terms of sure. when somebody comes to you to mat the artwork, mm -hmm. do you, I, I, how am I going to phrase this? Some of these are very creative pieces, like that Klimt work you did was stunning yeah. with the squares and the hand cut. Was that your recommendation or did the person oh, ask that, you? To well, actually, my mom brought that print for me. From oh. <laughs> so I, I matted it for myself and I just thought that might be fun to do. So I did. Well, it was very cool. I mean, that was awesome. That's, that's very, that's very innovative. You know, I have never seen such kind of design on the mat. It's wonderful. That's so beautiful. Uh, decorative matting like that was really popular back in the early nineties and late eighties when um, I don't know if you're familiar with P. Buckley Moss prints, but um, she did a, she had a stylized watercolor technique that she used and she, she did children and um, she did a lot of Amish subjects and everybody wanted something special for their P. Buckley Moss. Now, there are a lot of P. Buckley Mosses out there and nobody's framing them anymore. <laughs> because there's too many or did something? Yeah. I, I, it's, it's just gone out of style. Got it. Um, we also yeah. used to do a lot of stuff for the county fair when I worked in Gaithersburg. In Olney, it's not so popular. <laughs> but in Gaithersburg, right next to the fairgrounds, people would bring in their needleworks and we do a lot of interesting mats for those. Oh, needlework, I would not have thought that. Yeah. Um, now, we were having a conversation prior to the Zoom started about things you can use, materials that we can use on mats, which I thought actually this crowd might appreciate. Now, can you use the matting material as like watercolor um, media? Oh, well, Probably not. It's a little too, um, it's not as uh, coated as the watercolor paper, so it would absorb it too quickly. Okay. I think. Okay. Um, but, you know, if you're, if you have a lot of leftover centers and you want to do art on it, um, doesn't, uh, um, Daniel Smith makes a watercolor ground that you could put on it. Okay. And then if you put gesso on it, could you use oil paint? I'm sure you could. It's nice for pastel as well. I bet it is. It'd be interesting to, you know, create a mat, like do the mat and then have something, you know, plain in the center. It'd be crazy. <laughs> you could do that. Anybody else? Any questions? Haral, you had so many. <laughs> I, I got all the answers, honestly. All I saw the uh, presentation, the PDF, like the PowerPoint, and I, I got all the slides, you know, especially the bevel, how to place it, how to make the marking and everything. So, so far I got the answer, but I want to ask Laurie about, do you give any training class or something? I would like to learn in person. <laughs> because, uh, not really. Um, <laughs> at this because, point, no. <laughs> okay, because uh, but, 
Um, Looking and doing is different, honestly. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe when we get past this pandemic, we can have an in-person session and you can actually try out the Logan, which would be fine with me. Yeah, we can do that, actually. Uh, I, maybe we can have an MAA workshop at that point. But yeah, yeah, and clearly and COVID still. Yeah, it's um, trouble making oh. perfect cuts in the corners of the beveled mat. I, I, you know, I have, it's just practical. Maybe practically when I do, uh, I might get an answer. But right now, visualizing is difficult. Like once we cut one side, you know, like mm -hmm. we both the side, yeah. how we get the right corner, like, Neat so that, that's the nice thing about the Logan mat cutter. Each time you cut a line, you stop and start where you're supposed to stop and start. Uh -huh. Now, if and it, it it does a really good job uh -huh. about the corners. If you do get a little overcut, you can burnish it down with the burnisher, and you can barely tell that it's an overcut. Uh huh. Okay. Because because you don't want to press real hard because it'll make a mark. But put a put a piece of paper towel or something between the corner and the burnisher, and just press down on it, and it you can barely tell. Because that's the only thing stopped me to try. Uh, first of all, as I told you, the mat uh, uh, the board is yeah. expensive. So when we try and the marking and the measurement doesn't happen right away, and even the, especially the corners, because the bay wheel corners are so challenging to see, I don't know how we can just match it, you know? And yeah. that's only the thing stopped me to try. <laughs> yeah, the, the mat cutter we have doesn't have the bar. It, it doesn't tell you where to start. So you kind of have to figure that out for yourself. But it does have a little mark on the on the cutter to tell you where to stop, which is good. Um, and you can kind of feel when when it when it hits the end, and you just stop. Um, after a while, you get to know where to stop and start. But with with the Logan, it's not a matter of figuring it out because it's it's just there. You start, you start at the pencil line and you stop at the pencil line. And you can see it clearly on the right. Okay. Uh, and you know, one more thing I wonder, like we do two inches frame, right? Or three inches, whatever it is. So how you measure, like the bevel is in, included in that because bevel yeah. is like one or two mm, right? It's yeah. included in two inches. Yeah, it should be. Um, yeah. Okay. Because you're cutting back into the into it, so that the overall size is two inches, and then you the bevel would be a sixteenth or so. Um, because there is if a minor uh, difference between like a you know in a cutting and matting everything you know the frame will not fit the painting will be uh, behind the print or whatever the clear print will be behind so it's really a very we have to be very precise yeah, it can be cutting, it right? can be tricky it would yeah, it will be very precise cutting right yeah That's you do have to measure pretty closely um no also with frames um when we cut well, we cut our mat 16 by 20 when we cut the frames, we add an eighth of an inch allowance so that the 16 by 20 will fit into the frame easily. So you make it bigger. Yeah. Oh, so, it can so go really behind it. An eighth by 20 and an eighth. Um, nowadays, some ready-made frames are coming exactly 16 by 20. And mm -hmm. it's really hard to get a 16 by 20 mat right into them. So you have to measure your frame before you, before you cut your mat. So if your frame is exactly 16 by 20, you might want to cut your mat 15 and 7 eighths by 19 and 7 eighths, just to make sure it goes in easily. Same with the glass, but most ready-made frames come with their own glazing. That's also safer for the sake of the glass because the frame size may adjust with atmospheric 
situations, more moisture, drier, yeah. it can flex, it can shrink or whatnot and put a stress on the glass. Well, all, all the materials can do that. They all, they all shrink and expand, unfortunately, <laughs> especially around here with all the hard humidity. It's interesting, but difficult, tricky, tricky technique, I can say. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot involved. Um, yeah. Practice. You have to know how to add and subtract fractions. <laughs> so anybody, who told, anybody who told it, an artist that they didn't have to know math is wrong. <laughs> Yeah, we're good to know everything and we can try one day, you know, if you find the cutting and everything. So, uh, Lori, I if I missed, sorry about it, like, did you mention the link about the tool, the cutting tool? Because there are so many on Amazon, like Logan, but in the one brand only, there are so many options. So, which one is actually the perfect? Because it's used in trial, right? I had actually sent a link in the chat. Hopefully, oh, did you write, did you? write oh. one? It, it was at Dick's Click. It's the compact Mac cutter. Yeah, and hopefully that ninety ninety seven. Yeah, it was like yeah, that's exactly I think around what it was. So, um, hopefully that yeah, it, it, it was ninety seven ninety three. You're if you're right gonna cut your own mats, it's it's a pretty good investment. Um, It depends on how the first one. Yes, the first one. Yes. I just chat again, copy pasted from um, her. Uh, anyway, I got it. Yeah. Any other questions for Lori? We're hitting almost eight o'clock. Well, wow, quite crowd tonight. Lori must have answered everybody's questions. We're all <laughs> going to be matting our own work uh, just in time for Kensington. Uh, so that will be very useful. Um, well, thank you, Lori. If you thank do you have, have any well. questions, you know, if you have any questions, come by the shop. Um, if I don't have any customers, I can show you around. Yeah, that's yes, I will. I will definitely one day, one day you know, I will show up. <laughs> Okay. That's awesome. Thank <laughs> you. You're welcome. And thank you, everybody, for coming. Stay thank you, safe. Laurie. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Laurie. Uh, it was yeah. great. Great to see you, too. Good to see you, too. <laughs>